Hey, what's up guys and gals? My name is Rick Nigy. Thank you so much for joining me today in this fact or fiction episode. Today we're going to be talking about The Munsters. This is a show that I know both you and I love, so I do thank you for joining me today in this video. In case you're unaware, I do have an entire playlist focused on fact or fiction videos, whether this was true or not, and I go into detail about specific topics on different shows like I Love Lucy, Gilligan's Island. You should check out my playlist to see more. And of course, my channel in general. Check that out. Lots of content for you to enjoy. Today, however, we're going to be talking about the show The Monsters. Now, while we're watching this show, we pay attention to Grandpa and of course Herman, Lily, Eddie, many different characters in the show. But what really blends into the background and really sticks into our subconscious is, of course, the facades, the backgrounds, the scenery, the homes, all those things that make the show believable. If these characters would be in front of something like a regular dining room table, the whole ambiance would be off. And so something that was very prevalent that you can see in pretty much every episode of The Munsters are spider webs, these ugly things in the background that are of course created by spiders that we kind of take for granted, we really don't pay attention to. We notice that their entire house is dusty and grimy, but again, it adds to the ambiance of the show. Now, how many of you have thought about these cobwebs or spider webs? Now, were they real? Were they fake? How did they get these cobwebs all over the set? Did they hire a bunch of spiders to get on the show in order to do this? Of course, it's a bit laughable, but if you really think about it, how do they do this? And we get a lot of this information from the crew. They said that the furniture was musty and dirty, and they added more dust on different filming days. In fact, it was constant work to get more dust in the background on all these items. Believe it or not, the dust would be blown away and they had to add more. Just keeping the house with fresh cobwebs was a chore for the art directors. One man who was on set said, I remember these guys had guns, which looked like weapons that were used in the movie The Ghostbusters. And this was recalled by Ted Eccles, who was also on the show MASH. According to him, they had these large devices that had fans built into them that spun the equivalent of rubber cement. Yes, guys and gals, what they used to make these cobwebs, the numerous cobwebs that you see on the show The Munsters, was rubber cement. They would use this rubber cement in front of a fan that would be blowing air in front of it, thereby blowing across the room the rubber cement in a spread out fashion. It would make long tendrils and catch on everything from the mantles to the fireplace, the statues, the candles, all of these objects and essentially re-cobweb the set. The entire set smelled like a rubber cement factory with all the people moving around and the cameras, the cast, the moving around of the props themselves. It was a constant re-webbing process that just went on before they would shoot a scene. They would usually come in, spritz the entire set down with fresh quote unquote cobwebs, and eventually the lights would melt it. So this is why it would be a constant process and you would see these cobwebs all over the set. Now it's crazy to think this happened in the 60s because if OSHA had anything to say about this, they would have a big issue with the safety of the actors regarding health reasons and breathing in this substance. Of course, this would be something that they would not do today, but this is a great fact. So now you know how this was done. And the cobwebs, I tell you, do look really realistic. So it was a pretty smart and ingenious way, but probably not the healthiest way. So now you know, guys and gals, that these were not real cobwebs, but in fact, blown rubber cement all across the set that would later harden Again, thank you so much for joining me today. I hope you are keeping positive and not letting any problems, any negativity that surrounds us in the world bring you down. That's super important. It's so easy for it to bring us down, but let me tell you, sometimes if you just think about it and know that tomorrow will be a better day, it helps so much. Just a simple thought like that. We'll see you next time, guys and gals, and don't forget, be hopeful.